Hey guys, Gamerzak here and welcome to another one of my Civilization 6 videos. Now, one big part of Civilization is the passage of time, progressing through the ages from what once was to what may be. And this isn't just represented by the discoveries of new technologies, but also the entering and exiting of eras. The eras are a nice indicator of how well you're doing and how much you've progressed, but there are functional and mechanical purposes to them too. So in Civ 6, we have eight unique eras to go through. They are the Ancient Era, the Classical Era, the Medieval Era, the Renaissance Era, the Industrial Era, the Modern Era, the Atomic Era, and finally the Information Era. It's basically the same as how Civ 5 ended up with the Gods and Kings expansion. However, there are some notable changes and additions to how things work with eras in Civilization 6. So let's go over the basics and the new stuff now. First up is the Tech and Civics tree. So which era you're in will be determined by how far along you've progressed down the two trees. Those trees being the Technology and Civic trees. Reach a Tech or Civic in the next era and it'll count as you moving on to the next era. Now we don't know the final versions of the tech or civics tree quite yet, but you can see on the technology tree in the ancient era, you start off with things like pottery, animal husbandry and mining and go up to about wheel, bronze working and masonry. In the classical era we got things like currency and construction and engineering. In the medieval era we get to military tactics, castles and education. In the renaissance era we get to cartography, mass production and gunpowder. The industrial era has industrialization, steam power, and sanitation. The modern era gets you flight, combustion, and electricity. The atomic era gets you to rocketry, computers, and nuclear fission. And finally in the information era, we've got satellites, robotics, and nuclear fusion. Now on the other hand, there is the civics tree. Now the civics tree is something new to Civilization VI and it basically takes all of the cultural and government and policies into its own unique tree. But it still follows the eras. So starting with the ancient era, it'll automatically start with code of laws and moving on to things like military tradition, early empire and mysticism. In the classical era, you unlock new governments like autocracy, classical republic and oligarchy. Then in the medieval era, you start having things like feudalism, guilds, and you unlock the government for monarchy. In the renaissance, you unlock merchant republic and theocracy as a form of government. And quite a few civics open up in the industrial era, from civil engineering, nationalism, mass media, capitalism, three new government forms, democracy, fascism, and communism, and also the nuclear program. And that leads to the atomic era, which has the cold war and the space race. And like the tech tree, we end in the information era with globalization and social media. And it's also important to note that when you unlock certain civics, you get the policy cards and some of those policies are era specific as well. For example, maritime industries, which provides 100% production to ancient and classical naval units. So it's only relevant for those two eras. Now moving on to civilizations. Some civilization bonuses are era specific. So of course the unique units are specific to their equivalent because they replace an existing unit with something that's slightly better or more interesting. So those are only available when you're at that specific tech level for that unit. There's also things like China's builders that can rush ancient and classical wonders only, while France has a bonus to medieval, renaissance and industrial wonders. Now it's important to note that although all civs are on a generally level playing field, each civ has an era that they will have an advantage, like Germany's unique industrial district and U-boats only coming in at later eras, compared to Sumeria's bonuses with barbarians, war carts, and ziggurats in the very early game. So if you're playing a short game and starting in the earlier eras, maybe go Sumeria. Now moving on to great people. Great people are now unique and no two are the same, even if they're the same type, like two great scientists are now different. They're also now tied to their eras. For example, you could get Homer as an ancient great writer, but Jane Austen in the industrial era. Now you race against other civs to get the ones that you want, and once you get a specific great person, they're removed from the list. 
Although great people are tied to certain eras because everyone rushes for the same ones, you'll often see great people from a variety of eras up for grabs at the same time. But as the world progresses as a whole, the great people will progress too. The tricky thing is, is whether you should rush the current great person or let someone else take it, allowing you to grab the next one, which will be different. Their uses can be very different, and there's no way of knowing which one will be on the list next. For example, the classical general Sun Tzu gives you the art of war great work, while the also classical general Boudicca converts adjacent barbarian units to your control. Now, the next point on era changes are roads. Roads are now routes between cities and they're not built to arbitrary locations on the map. You can't choose to build roads generally speaking, and they're set up by establishing trade routes. The trader unit will place a road on every tile it passes through as it goes between cities. However, military engineers can manually build roads between cities and unlocks with the military engineering technology in the medieval era. Rome has a unique era advantage here though, as the Roman military legion acts as a military engineer too, and notably replaces the swordsman, so that's earlier on in the classical era. And finally, roads actually change as you progress through the eras, and they upgrade when you research specific technologies. You have the ancient road, the medieval road, the industrial road, and modern roads. Railroads have also been seen. And these aren't just aesthetic changes either. Ancient roads don't have bridges, and industrial roads have been reported to reduce movement costs even more. So as you progress through the eras, your roads will become more effective too. Next up, we've got to talk about warmongering. Now, warmongering is a relationship penalty that's applied every time you declare war or capture a city. So this warmongering penalty can have some severe effects on your relationships within the game. But here the eras have a very clear distinction. There is zero warmongering penalty in the ancient era because it sort of assumes that you're not cultured or diplomatic enough to have any reasonable way to declare war properly. So there's no warmongering penalty in the ancient era. There's some warmongering penalty in the classical era. There's a bigger penalty in the medieval era and it gets even worse in the Renaissance. So the further along you are in the eras, the worse the warmongering penalty is. So this actually creates an interesting situation where sometimes if you want to declare war on someone, you might want to purposefully redirect your research or civics to something that's a little lower tech so you don't move on to the next era. So moving on to the era, just in terms of the warmongering penalty, can actually influence your decisions on your techs and civics because you're trying to avoid that penalty. And yes, the warmongering penalty follows the person who is declaring war. So if the person declaring war is in the ancient era, and he's declaring war on someone who's in the Renaissance era, that person still doesn't get any penalty because they are in the ancient era. Now, to avoid some of the warmongering penalty, you can declare war properly through a formal war by denouncing your intended enemy five turns before declaring war, and that will limit the warmongering penalty you get. Otherwise, you could have justified wars. Justified wars further limit the penalty, but also limit how much you're allowed to do in that war. These come into play mainly in the Renaissance era, unlocked with the diplomatic service civic. It's also been stated that there are more casus belli or casus belli, which should come into play in later eras. And finally, as a small note, there are also some city-state bonuses that are affected by errors. If you are suzerain of the city-state soul, then you earn a random Eureka when you enter a new era, and you'll receive a random civic inspiration from Vilnius when they enter a new era. So there's all sorts of little small things like that, which are also affected by transitioning between the eras. All right, that's it for the eras and ages through Civilization 6 for now. What do you think of the era changes in Civ 6? Oh, and which era is your favorite? I personally like the older eras, ancient to medieval, as I just like the aesthetic. And again, just for fun, I put a poll on this video just for you to show your favorite era because everyone likes to vote for things, right? Just click the eye icon in the top right corner and you can cast your vote. Also, if you're looking for more Civ 6 videos, I have two special ones just for you. If you're feeling like a winner, I have one about the victory conditions of Civ 6, including a new one never before seen in the Civ series. And since I mentioned warmongering here, you can check out the types of war you can have in my Casus Belli or Casus Belli video. I also release a new Civilization 6 video every Friday, so subscribe if you'd like to see what else I have in the works. And that's it from me, my name has been GamerZack, thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video!